you know this show is reaching critical mass, and you also know I like to do concepts where the increase in format points overshadows the dearth of content. So here are some of the concepts I didn't get around to. I did do an episode called New in which I intentionally misunderstood the brief, but of course it would be quite relevant for a contemporary popular channel like mine to cover brand new emoji designs like the needless convolution of the already existing dizzy face. This one that I have to presume to be God. And okay, the anime exhale. This is where we see the flaw in trying to cover brand new emoji. The designers haven't reached them yet. Emojipedia is always ready, joy is also quite quick, and for the rest, it's whenever they get around to it. I'd be picking between three and picking Google. <laughs> I always meant to do an episode in live action with the emojis like floating around in front of me. Kind of like the weather episode in which I stood in front of the emojis, but the other way around. I'd like gesture at the different designs and pretend I can see them. But when I came up with that, there were like five listings per emoji on Emojipedia. Now there's 17. And I'm just really bad at memorizing full sentences of scripted content. So I think I'm doing the placard emoji, and if I remember correctly, a lot of them are like protests against legibility or against content entirely. But then Emojipedia's design, the word's a bit thick, but it actually looks like something someone would hold up. I know placards can also be in lawns, but the more active way to use this emoji is to suggest a protest, so I choose that one. I had one episode on Japanese stuff, and as a country, it's gonna dominate emoji. It's where they're from, it's where they're used the most. There are loads of culturally specific ones, some are just Japanese characters on squares. I kept meaning to go back to it, but also kept growing past that bit when I tried to play toward the anime geek audience, and even a parody of being obsessed with a foreign culture just comes across the same as being obsessed with the foreign culture. So I wouldn't have wanted to do a bit, and would have just scrolled the Hinamatsuri dolls and seen what I could come up with about them, like, this guy's vomiting into a bin, these are space elders, these ones are ashamed of their genitalia, there's Sherry or Terry or the third sister I just just learned of when I fetched the image reference. These ones are reading the menu at a cheese restaurant, and I like Facebook's best. Um, Sugoi. But where would Mitsu Emoji be without all its thrilling content and strong bad references? Yeah, I'm running out of engaging categories, but I could have still done one on, like, number emojis or letters. And look, I could have done a massive episode on shapes, trolling the viewer with commitment to reviewing each of them in thorough detail. I'd actually pause between sentences, and I'd go, like, the large blue circle should look like a flat circle, not a kind of sphere. It should be unambiguously blue to as many cultures as possible, and on the internet that's best expressed with the closest we can get to the hex color hash 0000FF, with none of this perspective shading. As soon as you imply depth or light, it's no longer a circle, but a portrayal of a circular object. I'm not gonna do a Magritte reference here, because I did that reference already. Messenger's stylistic choice of sketchiness comes up as a weakness in shapes, showing a little splat of cyan paint. And emoji decks keep up their Far Eastern loyalty by drawing one of those little gems a dragon emoji might hold. I covered the dragon emoji in an episode that wasn't about shapes, but then again, Aren't all episodes about shapes? Nobody gets the hex color perfectly, some are too indigo, some too dull, many too cyan. AU took a few drafts to even reach blue, and my preferred large blue circle is SoftBank's, even though it actually has a white outline.
then I'd just keep going with every color and shape. Do you get it? The joke. That there's no jokes. Maybe this is how Weezer come up with their album covers. One reason I didn't go forward with the intentionally boring theme is because I've just realized that's not much different to a normal episode. In a former job, I had to make presentations on Prezi. This video is not sponsored by Prezi, and it's so hokey that I just felt I had to make an office episode on it. But then I reached that same realization about there being too many options to display in that format. So I thought maybe I'd do PowerPoint and wrote the office episode, and then only did a little bit of that in PowerPoint, because it's not that interesting in practice. And I basically have to rebuild the Emojipedia pages from the ground up when I could just go to Emojipedia. This video is not sponsored by Emojipedia. So which stationary emojis are best? Whee! The proposals for the card file box emoji include such innovations as Twitter's round edges, Whatsapp's that looks like a drawer where the things in the drawer don't fit in the drawer, Facebook's floating lid, Open emojis that's like a gramophone. Emoji that's his sad little box of every birthday card you've ever received. And apples that's the best. These last 10 episodes were so gonna have a food show. When we looked at snacks, and by we, I mean I, we took half the remaining food emojis and left half behind for later. And the half we left behind just happened to be the half that it's impossible to come up with any material on. They're just boring, really. Here's a cucumber emoji, it looks like a cucumber. Should we contrive, like, a recipe show out of it? Fine, look. Take one cucumber, uh, chop the plastic off, uh, cut the, the emoji dice. Another idea was to do like a fake outtakes episode, which would be like a fake clip show episode, but with a yet more tenuous link to canon. Someone should try this sometime where the alleged outtakes collectively tell their own story. But as a bit, it doesn't quite sustain for an emoji review show where the only thing that needs to be consistent is me stating which design I prefer. Plus, I've made enough genuine mistakes. Some emojis now have better design options, and sometimes I've just picked the wrong one, so I could do a do-over episode where I knowingly revisit emojis I've already covered and pick a better one. Like, I picked the table tennis racket with the rough red side, and then I noticed much later that it's the red sides that are smooth, the black sides are rough, so maybe that was a really bad choice. I chose it specifically for the texture. So I should go back and... Hey, no, look, there's no regulation on which side is rough or smooth, you just have to let the opponent inspect your racket before play. So for this do-over, I'm gonna pick Apple. Just look at the texture. Oh, did I say Apple? <laughs> Apple's the one I chose the first time around. Wait, is this the outtake? If I were a modern broadcaster, I'd be down here in the corner of the screen with a hideous microphone and too distracted by my audience spamming the faces of right-wing personalities. Hey, new subscriber! And every episode would be six hours of witless content you can't even remember, but it would keep us occupied in our lonely, lonely lives as I pick Openmoji. Could have been better for me to theme my episodes by how emoji are actually used, like when fruits that don't resemble genitalia are used to represent genitalia they don't resemble. I squandered my chances at that approach by considering what things are intended to mean by the designers rather than the users, and you can find the apparently rude emojis stuffed away in existing episodes. But I found one more. This star sign looks like that sex position where you stare at each other's navels until one of you gets off. It's the one on top who'll get off. It's like a safety pin gone rogue. I don't have much propensity towards sexual humor, I'd rather just have my cake. But occasionally it is. Really, a full episode of me eye-rolling at what other people legitimately find funny wouldn't have much entertainment value. I'd just be acting superior to those who have way more fun and communicate more successfully than me. Dokmo. 
on YouTube, you gotta dream big. I'm the host of the first and most popular and only emoji review show on my channel. At one point I thought I dedicated a whole 10 episodes near the end to collaborations because I knew I'd never sustain a 100 episode show by myself. It'd be real-time, semi-scripted conversation, like a panel show. Having studied some notes, but still giving honest reactions, and then neatened up in post. But then, I just don't know ten people. I can't think of any YouTuber who'd want to work with me. Hey, no, I told you, no. Did I trigger ya, Sajul? I don't like you, and I generally do like birds. Every time I post a cover song, you make an hour-long reaction video where you pause it every few seconds and call me slurs. We're not collaborators. I prepared material on this cock emoji. Well, it's not a gender or race one. We might be alright. He looks like a- It's a reference to Groucho Marx. It's Groucho Marxism. Hey, uh I bet this emoji identifies as a, a d different emoji. Oh yeah, which one? Uh, the beta, uh... I think I just need to pick one of these before you say a slur, so what's up? Well, it's crazy what you could have had. If you liked this video, I need this. I need this.